a professional shift from teaching Spanish in high school to folk music research at the Jamaica School of Music allowed me to pass on what I had learned and to develop my own method of notation and a methodology for developing a sense of rhythm and creativity in children, as many of the school's graduates were absorbed into the education system in schools in both rural and urban areas. And this is an excerpt from a tape produced by the School of Music in my very much younger days. Traditional drum rhythms of African and African-derived societies present some difficulty when one tries to transcribe them using the medium of Western notation. It is even more difficult for the beginner who may not be a literate musician. there is a lot of that on the CD. As the years passed, I was able to introduce competition classes for drums and percussion into the national festivals of the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission. Girls and women then took their place beside their male counterparts in performing ensembles and developed as soloists on stage and in the tourist industry. The barrier still remains in ritual groups, however. Documentation of the beat in our heritage may be found in various places, in the African Caribbean Institute of Jamaica, in collections at the Edna Manley College, and in the library of the JCDC. Now to the effects of rhythm. Rhythm in Jamaica is more than just the purview of drummers and other musicians. Response to the popular musics of urban youth draws us back to the African notion that the first creation of the supreme consciousness, the original energy force was the drum and rhythm, returning to the early idea of sound and power. The human body produces waves of sound, rhythmic sound waves, the heartbeat sounds of swallowing and the digestive process, the steady rhythm of the breath. Added to that are the creative elements of body percussion finger snapping, hand clapping, foot, foot stomping, forcible inhalation and exhalation of breath. <laughs> the indefinitely pitched grunts, groans and whistles, which allow non-instrumentalists to participate in the music. We return to Dinky Minnie to hear the voice being used in this fashion. Occupation with rhythm affect the individual and the community. Drums of different sonorities and percussion instruments of different textures affect areas of the body and, as mentioned before, guide movement patterns and sequences. This phenomenon is easily discernible in the Kumina complex. The identifiable metronomic beat of the kata stick struck on the body of the bandhu sets the pulse for the worshippers. The dancers who move with shuffling steps, progressing in an anti-clockwise circle, inching the toes along in flat-footed, close connection with the ground. The bandhu replicating the pulse with a doubled beat separated by rests is the engine of this progress. It's low-pitched vibrations resonating with the pelvic area, and it is this pelvic circling and thrusting that propels the body forward. 
The plane cast with cuts and breaks, direct sidewards and crossing movement, and contraction and release of the trunk. The shakas appeal to the head, which oscillates gently as the neck is relaxed and soft, and the shoulders which move in opposition, the head oscillating gently. Unchanging rhythm patterns also suggest repetition of small elements of movement and short melodic lines. It is this repetitive layering of regular subdivision of the beat and irregular subdivision in constant point and counterpoint that leads to auto-hypnotic states in which participants lose contact with this reality operating through an altered state of consciousness, leaving themselves open to ecstasy and possession total psychic release. The effects of the beat on the physical body are often therapeutic for both instrumentalists and those who allow themselves to float on the rhythm, frequently releasing them from states of emotional distress, removing stifling inhibitions and certain physical limitations. Drummers report feelings of empowerment, heightened consciousness and upliftment, and ability to communicate without words within the ensemble. Simple ailments experienced before an extended drumming session seem to disappear. I have seen a bent, pain-racked female elder throw away her walking stick on which she had been leaning heavily. She was transformed into a supple, energetic dancer who, when the drums were silent and she no longer felt the beat internally, reached immediately for stick and chair. <laughs> Such is the power of the beat. The beat also facilitates communal movement towards the collective unconscious state as seen in the trumping and trooping of revivalists. And this next short example was collected by Lil Sewell, in, I think on Orange Street in 1985. <laughs> overstate the importance of rhythm in the life of a neo-African culture such as ours. In today's society, the rhythms of the night remove the social barriers between classes as uptown travels to downtown for physical and emotional release in Pasa Pasa. Rhythm also stirs the mix of middle class and the massive at Carnival where the uniformly designed costumed wrestlers jostle for space in the road march processional alongside dance hall aficionados, their own mode of dress being a kind of empowering mask. There's continuity, conflict, and change. The power of the beat is a continuing force in the music of Jamaica and those cultural traits affected by music. A fortuitous mix of many traditional beats strumming patterns of mento and the fertilizing influence of rhythm and blues and other forms created ska, rock steady, reggae, and dance hall, the latter stripped of the expected harmonic structure and with little melodic movement, making it more accurately described as chant. But the music from which this grew started early in the 60s, and we hear first of all the Fuchs brothers with O Carolina, then Justin Hines and the Dominoes, Carrigo Brincom, uh, Derek Morgan with Tougher Than Tough, and uh, Phyllis Dillon, Don't Stay Away. Very short excerpts. <laughs>
of dub. Rhythm tracks that supported many popular songs took life, with occasional surges of the instrumental parts providing a bed of sound for the creative offerings of DJs. This spawned new genres of artistic endeavor. The birth of the DJ toasting over song and rhythm gave way to the recording of these creators who then became authentic recorded artists. also used this bed in its earliest manifestations when we had artists like Oku Onura, Eva Gordon, and then later Muta Baruka and Yasu Safari. Uh, they introduced clever and searching manipulation of language, rhythm, and timbre to treat with the less than satisfactory conditions of Jamaican life and relationships. This form soon moved away from already recorded rhythms as poets forged bonds with musicians and drummers who performed live and subsequently created original tracks in support of the form, highlighting lines of particular power and poignance. This turned on a whole generation to the power of the word, another kind of beat, and continues to draw on a growing cadre of aficionados and developed a market for recorded and published versions of this repertoire. Presentations of poetry are an important part of the entertainment scene, with structured associations, events, and festivals becoming significant calendar of markers. The power of today's urban recordings lies in the rhythm and the created efforts of various studio crews and musicians who have embraced the technology of the digital drum machines, synthesizers, and enhanced mixing boards. So important are these sequences that whole albums are created with several artists' recordings supported by these potent combinations of rhythm. Each rhythm is titled, making dancehall artists often able to appear on shows without rehearsal with a backing band. Some of the recent rhythms to appear are Badaration, Judgment, Drop Leaf and Chachanga. Artists recording singles on these rhythms include Spraga Benz, Mad Cobra, Anthony B, Bounty Killer, Elephant Man, Vibes Cartel, Maca Diamond, Beanie Man, Tanto Metro, and Devante. Now, the military rhythm, which has taken life and is very popular now, created in the end of 2004 and into 2005. We will hear Bounty Killer doing Warlord Walk, Maka Diamond doing Mr. Tekiba, and Beanie Man doing Bon Judas. <laughs> Thank you. 
popularity there is, but no total acceptance. <laughs> there is undoubted conflict expressed by new newspaper columnists and in letters to the editor. The tendency by a segment of the society to condemn all dance, all music as encouraging violence and antisocial behavior patterns is short-sighted to my mind. We must be reminded that music itself is morally neutral. Most of this music is characterized by rhythmic complexity with a very slight nod of obeisance to melody and harmony. And therein lies the rub. The affective power of rhythm on the body makes it a potent vehicle for lyrical content, and the power of the beat goes on and on. In Jamaica, music continues attending the stages of life from birth to death, yet much of the psychic and psychological underpinnings of this cycle are changing. The death celebrations which allowed body, mind, and spirit release in the grieving process have been replaced by sound systems and the traditional foods are being replaced by cuisine and commercially packaged snacks of street vendors. The beat continues. It is a vital part of the heritage. It plays a part in cultural upheaval and conflict, if only a coincidentally supportive role. It may add fire to the flame of controversy in the debates of civil society. It is evidence of cultural transition, but most important, we still use rhythm to foster cohesive exchange. We drum our way to better health. We sing our way to serenity. And that's a phrase that I have borrowed. It is my hope that the experimental work that started in the 70s into the restorative powers of music, chant, and rhythm, that is, the beat in fostering alignment and balance of body, mind, and spirit will continue as the beat goes on and on and on. Thank you very much.